Hey, Matt, welcome to the show. It was a way of getting started. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Appreciate you uh, <laughs> taking the time to, to meet with me and uh, uh, glad we could get this connected. So I am the director of uh, sales for the Midwest uh, through the West Coast for C-Safe Global. It's a uh, cold supply chain company, uh, primarily serving the bio and pharmaceutical uh, companies. Uh, before that, I was with Honeywell uh, Performance and Material Technology Division, selling production chemicals, uh, as well as RD chemicals, primarily, you guess it, to the biotech pharmaceutical uh, wow. world. Yeah, as well as, you know, doing some aerospace and electronics. But before that, I uh, was with a company called Air Products and Chemicals. Uh, they manufacture cryogenic gases, and uh, they service a wide variety of, of different industries, ranging from uh, the healthcare, aerospace, electronics. And this was probably one of the biggest foundations uh, uh, where I really got to get my sales career kind of going. It's where I learned how to prospect, negotiate, uh, being creative, have a learning mind, and, and knowing when to be quiet. <laughs> It sounds like pretty straightforward stuff. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I sometimes I, I think it is. Is it? Sometimes <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I sometimes think I'm it is. I'm trying to think, yeah. what is it and what does it do? And... It, it, right. Yeah. How do you like it? You must like it. You've you know, been doing it a while. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've, I've uh, been having, I guess, the, the more of the, uh, more of my sales uh, from this, this side of the world of, of seven years. And I, I really enjoy it. I think... Uh, I think part of the, the, the mentality, I, I come from playing sports, uh, specifically baseball. And I think you, uh, you understand you're never going to bat a thousand. Right. <laughs> you're gonna, yeah. You're going to have some, Just some anyone can swing and, a bat, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I coming from not, you know, continuing to play baseball out of uh, college. I, it was probably one of the biggest careers that kind of matched that, that mentality of what you put in, um, having the mindset uh and that you can you can be successful so yeah and it sounds like pretty technical products selling to pretty smart people yes yeah definitely a lot smarter than me <laughs> I mean, a <laughs> lot smarter oh my gosh yeah i mean these are the uh the, the phds the wow. uh you, you have uh, some of the smartest people in the world and it's uh very inspiring too because uh you you get to really see how these people are making a huge difference uh, and especially with uh, the pharma and the biotech for people that whether you, you know someone you uh, love someone uh, with a, you know either a disease disability either they're, they're really out there trying to fix it and solve it and how do you handle that as far as like learning what they care about being able to talk about the product and their words do you have a yeah. technical person with you or do you just it Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, we do. We, you know, we have technical people. Um, this has been for this, uh, this role within uh, CSAFE has been probably one of the most interesting and unique because there's so many uh, people in the party. Uh, yeah. uh, with the cold supply chain, we're dealing with a, uh, a powered uh, battery powered container that's going under the belly of an airplane. And so it's being transported throughout. Yeah, I, I never knew this existed. I mean, frankly, my wife kind of made fun of me saying, you know, there's other things that go under an airplane besides your bag. I'm like, no, there isn't. That's just, that's, that's for bags. Um, no, there, there is. Uh, and so you're dealing with uh, a, a bunch of parties that are affected into the sale. Uh, you're dealing with airlines, you're dealing with the forwarders, and then you're do dealing with the, the, the shipper, the customer, the, the pharmaceutical and so it's a it's a very unique and so everyone's got uh you know there's it's a very unique situ situation but with the uh within the uh the, the you know the customers it's really kind of putting your your feet into their shoes understanding what's what's impacting what them. Where, where where is it that that they value and i know it sounds kind of redundant but um and then part of it i think it's just also being a, an authentic human being you know to see if you can help yeah, because I'm sure they don't view salespeople as value add, you know, because they're very analytical, very matter of fact. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it, it's definitely uh, you know, you can't you can't speak uh, speak cheesy, and I, I know like one, one thing I've I've kind of definitely learned from uh, from the phone is uh, where <laughs> I, I I made my my most learning mistakes was having a uh, you know this high pitched voice of this like. Hey, this is Matt Swan, and it just sounded <laughs> yeah. so over sales. Uh, and I think it's understanding the inflection of your tone. So yeah. that's it. We 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 overlook that, and I yeah. 
a headhunter finally told me this. It goes, okay, when you do a phone interview, sound yeah. like a salesperson. They go, what yeah. do you mean? It's like, have a cup of coffee, get excited. They want to yeah. hear a salesperson. Yeah. But yeah. my clients don't. <laughs> right. They want to hear somebody right. calm and knowledgeable. Yeah. And I think you it's have so to true. adapt to your audience yeah. in every way. Right. Yeah. No, it's, it's uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, I, I mean, I, I don't like using the word, uh, I, I heard it from someone say chameleon, but I think the best, best is mirroring. You know, people, people are comfortable, you know, we're, we're creatures of habit, we're creatures of familiarity, and the more familiar you are, the better yeah. that you're going to have for communicating with them. Yeah, and I had, I had some managers that worked in Manhattan, and yeah. I had the Southeast at one time. So we, yeah. we would be down in Atlanta and yeah. down in Atlanta, the, it was a little bit slower talking. And my Manhattan manager was like, blah, 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 hundred miles an hour. Oh, yeah. And the, the customer says, did you used to sell vacuum cleaners? It was like just a real chop at them. He goes, well, yeah. what do you think he meant by that? He goes, yeah, you kind of got to adapt your words per minute. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's so so true, so true indeed. I mean, uh, even I, I think uh, some of the people that I've uh, worked with that come from the East Coast and want to come to the West Coast for for a call yeah. or something in the past have noticed the same thing. They're like, "Am I saying something? Did I say something wrong?" And I'm like, "Hey, no, it's find your rhythm. Much. <laughs> Calm the rhythm down a little bit." Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. You know, because you get used to people, and people start to adapt to each other. And I remember yeah. when I was a kid. Uh, my mom was from Northern Canada, very mm -hmm. different accent. Yeah. Within two days, her accent would readapt right. to her childhood accent. Right. And that was good, though, right? Because yeah. the words and stuff. And I think that's important to be able to adapt to the way our clients want to communicate. Yes. Well, what type of price point are you at? Uh, in, in, in what way? Uh, what kind of deal size? Uh, deal sizes, uh, you know, they've, they've always tra traditionally have been uh, always ranging from like the, the six figures to the, you know, the seven wow. and up. So, uh, and, and frankly, the, uh, the part with like within their product, that was probably one of the best learning experiences with the company and uh, le really learning how to, because it's, it's one thing of you finding the business, creating the solution. And usually at the time, it's like when you did something that was totally unique and, you know, I know there's people that talk about like, Hey, how do you, how do you negotiate? You know? And I, it, it might sound, uh, it doesn't mean to come off as arrogant or, uh, but it's kind of like if you did all the work and you really created that value, I mean, there was hardly anything to negotiate when it came to the contract. And if it was, it was always between your, your legal team, the legal teams between the two companies, yeah. which leave it to the lawyers, you know? <laughs> Right. And it's a piece of hardware, right? It's a physical uh, product. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Everything's been a, a physical, physical product that they've been uh, using. So, yeah. yeah. Because I always found it, I was selling software sometimes to software companies. So they uh -huh. knew the game since right. it's all margin. Right. <laughs> you know, the right. piece of hardware, uh, there's, there's margin there, of course, but it's right, like, right. it's easier to protect. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. You guys, you guys have definitely, uh, a different story, you know, yeah. the, the story of, of how you guys get things done. It's, I admire it. So what do you think differentiates you from less successful salespeople at your company? Yeah, I, I think through, through, um, I, uh, I definitely say through, through success, it has been this, this determination. Um, really it's probably one of the biggest things been prospecting. Yeah. Um, and I know we kind of were sh sharing some messages about it, but, uh, within prospecting it's, it's, uh, I know sometimes we can all get kind of carried away that, oh, hey, you know, I'm, I'm working on this deal. And then we kind of forget about right. to build that pipeline. And I, I would say it's, it's never get, uh, I never want to get settled because as soon as that happens, all of a sudden you could have a dry, you know, a dry spell and <laughs> well, don't want that. That's the challenge doing big deals is that yeah. you, you get all your energies focused on closing that deal, but you got, right. and when it's, once it's closed then you have to start, the cycle all over again and those skills get a little dry a little stale yeah. like yeah. they would with baseball right if you're not right. what's the pitcher do when the other pitcher's right. up there 
There's, there's right. always somebody warming up in the bullpen, right? right? Yeah, that's exactly it. If you're not taking your swings, if you're not watching what's going on, oh my gosh, that, that 90 mile per hour ball becomes like 110, yeah. 120. And you're going to hurt your shoulder, right? Because your shoulder's <laughs> yeah, all yeah. tight. You got to loosen it up. Yeah. And, and I think that's what's great about salespeople is they, they keep all those skills going. Maybe yeah. through, I don't know how you do it, but time blocking or. Yes. Yeah. Time, time blocking is, is huge. You know, making sure that it's like, uh, whether it's time blocking or a set number of calls, uh, I, I, I commit to myself every week. Uh, I mean, that's, that's big. And then, you know, also for the, the mindset, you know, uh, I've been listening to your podcast for uh, I, now about three, yeah, three years. Is that all? Started a rookie. Yeah, it's about three, three, three years. Yeah. Well, to tell you the truth, Brian, uh, what was it? I read a book. Brian uh, by Brian Tracy and I can't I know he's written like a hundred you know, yeah, books, but <laughs> yeah I mean yeah they're probably all all in one but uh one of the biggest things I got out of it was he's like you know if you're whatever you're doing he's like you, you need to like always keep sharpening that and I was like oh it's like you know like sports and stuff and uh, he's like yeah you know listen to podcasts and I'm like what, what is a podcast Oh, and really? uh, yeah. yeah, that's uh, that was your one of uh, you were actually one of my first downloaded podcasts back in. Uh, I was I was in Hawaii listening to you, and I was like, oh, this, this makes sense. What else would you this do on, in Hawaii on your time off? Well, just laying by the beach. See what this guy's yeah. got to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing eventful, and uh, yeah, no, but uh, yeah, I'd say just a continuation of uh, continually learning, wanting to sharpen practice. Uh, you know, practice, practice, reading, reading, and, yeah. and then speaking to other people too, because you know, your other colleagues, you might learn something that you never, never even thought about, you know, different idea, different way to approach. Uh, I think yeah. it's just having an open, open mindset. Uh, because that's it, because your, your colleagues are making mistakes that you are either going to make, have made. Yeah. And why not learn from them? Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. Because you always see the, you get together at the quarterly meetings or stuff and the, the deal's a sure thing. And then by the next quarter, it's like, it didn't happen. You want, what happened? Where did it get stuck? Or where did it right. die? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. I think having like, in, I think with what you're saying, it's like having a questioning mindset, you know, uh, it's even to like, even when you're working with a colleague and they're like, well, so there was this deal and it, and it, uh, it got stuck because of some, you know, some customer. And so, yeah, it might get forecasted out a year later. Well, like my natural incl inclination of the next question is, is like, well, what was the challenge or problems that, that's yeah. causing it? You know, like, let's keep the story going. Let's, cause sometimes I, I think maybe, um, we all just take for granted that once we hear something, we don't really soak it in and, and we, uh, right. And we kind of want to protect ourselves because yeah, yeah. it hurts. Oh yeah, absolutely. You, you put a lot of time and energy into something and it doesn't come through. That's lost investment. Yes. Oh yeah. And so you probably don't want to hear the truth. The client is probably, you know, typically why does a deal get stuck? They, they yeah. don't know how to get it done. It, they have other priorities or they chose another way of solving it. Right. And they, they have zero incentive to, you know, give you the full story. Right. So, and how, how do you build up that rapport with clients? Do you have a particular style or? Well, uh, I noticed one thing that, that I stopped, I'll tell you, I stopped doing, uh, with, especially with, <laughs> with uh, I mean, it was the high, high squeaky voice where, uh, yep. I think even my, my wife caught me one time when she was, when she's like, what what was that voice that wasn't you you know like you didn't you didn't sound authentic you, you oh so you were sounded, you were subconsciously trying to act like a salesperson i i, I guess I, yeah. I probably that's probably the best way to put it um but you know with building rapport uh a, a whether it's a five i said there's a determination to to make sure i actually get a hold of someone so yeah. whether it's leaving voicemails um i prefer to always go with the phone uh, and then like probably after three or so, uh, phone calls, if I haven't gotten a hold of them, then I'll maybe switch to the email. But I, I really do like to have kind of a cadence of every, uh, three, three business days. Um, cause obviously it builds kind of familiarity. Eventually they're going to be right. like, Oh, you know, I've heard this guy 
and I forget. Um, oh, I, I don't know if you've seen like Jeb Jeb Blunt um, or you know yep. heard of him. But one of the things I absolutely loved about this guy was he goes he was talking about a Katy Perry song that he hated. But by the 15th time that he heard it, he's like, this is the best song. He started singing it. And I go, that's so true. You know, how many times that, that as long as we don't give up, you know, eventually someone, you know, picks up the phone and you're maybe shocked too, because they picked up the phone after you've left the, the seventh voicemail message. But a uh, combination of, of, you know, building the rapport and then really having the purpose, um, not going, hey, how's it going? It's uh, right. You got to really- have a good reason that they care about. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I think too, that they, they, first common like how's it going instantly tells them that this is a salesperson on the phone right and, and, and I, you're too lazy to come up with something better right it's like right. are you just looking yeah, yeah. how and can so, i help you yeah. yeah yeah and i really always like to you know a tell you know identify who i am and and then uh tell the purpose of why i'm calling so that a you know everyone's kind of comfortable of what's setting the expectations and uh and then really from there, then it's, it's setting a meeting and, and it's never, even if you do find out that there's a fit or a solution to help out, you got to hold it back. I mean, it's the closest thing to when you ask something and then, you know, shut up and be quiet. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the same thing of when you're finding a solution or a part of it, just keep that in your mind and let that build up. Because I think there's a tendency with other salespeople to also say, Oh, yep, we can fix this. And then all of a sudden you, you start derailing to where you missed like the other half of, right. of their story. Uh, so I'm, I'm really big on, and I, and I truly mean it too, of saying, look, I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to take notes and I'll get back to you. I'm not going to, I have nothing to sell you. I have nothing really to tell you at this moment. Otherwise, if, if I think there's a fit for us to keep having this conversation yeah. or, you know, if not, you know, I'm not going to waste your time or my time just right. being a human being. Yeah. That's it. I, I like that peer to peer instead of begging for time, like a little puppy yeah. and yeah. right. And just begging and then pouncing on yes. what, how, well, how you can help them right. before you really diagnose the full situation and the pain. Right. Now, how long do you think you had that high squeaky voice before your wife told you? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I was probably, I would say probably about six months. Uh, you know, earlier it's not that on bad. Life. Yeah. I, I, I was mean, probably 15 I, years, of, you know, and I kept wondering, why am I not getting these offers in certain sales? I got the track record. I got the W-2s. Yeah. And they, they want to yeah. hire somebody who sounds like a sales rep. And it's like, yeah, it's just the interview process. But when your right. wife told you, why did you take it so positively instead of it hurting your feelings? Well, that's, that's nice of you to think I took it. Moment. And then how did you correct it? Did you just become conscious of it and catch yeah, yourself? I, yes. Yeah. So I, I think, um, you know, especially when, when you're a salesperson working remote, obviously you're, you're limited right. to how much kind of feedback, right? Uh, uh, next to none, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're you're literally your your worst. Uh, you could be your worst enemy or your, your yeah. best partner. I want to be yeah. my best partner. That's one of the downsides because I, I've only worked in an office twice out of like yeah. twelve different companies. Yeah, I, the less, yeah. I mean, you have a definite extensive sales career. It's only been seven years of just working straight remote for me. Yeah. So. But what did work is I had an engineer for pretty much the same engineer for like 10 years, yeah. several different companies. And we were so hard on each other, Yeah. but positive, well, kind of jabbing each other like brothers would, right? Yeah. Okay. And it, it got us both very good, right? Okay. Because we never let each other get away with anything. Yeah. You know, I'd be at the airport and he was always the guy right on time, right before planes boarding. And I'd be looking yeah. at my watch, right? And the one yeah. time I was late, he was like, yeah. <laughs> you know? you're gonna get it right he was always like well why do you get here so early you're just gonna sit around it's like well there is this thing called traffic security lines are crazy you know you have no control over the weather oh yeah yeah but but that getting the feedback and i think one of the good things about the open office is when you get to see your peers and there's a little bit of accountability oh yeah yeah but when you're yeah. working out probably out of your house do you work out of yeah. your house? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Unless you have a dog or a cat or the wife catches you with a high pitched voice, you're not getting much feed. Clients aren't going to give it to you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it even, you know, with 
interacting with your colleagues, whether they be, you know, all the way over the East Coast. Um, I think it's critical to have those kind of conversations because, you know, A, it's, it's kind of somewhat of building a camaraderie uh, together that you're in the trenches as well. And then also to understand, like, what are you using that, that's working for you? Or yeah. um, it's just another resource. And that's and that probably saved you years of less performance since you do most of your prospecting on the phone. Yeah. And, you know, if you have a voice issue, whatever yeah. it is. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's costing you I, money. That, well, that was the thing is like uh, when I first started, it was a combination of, you know, making the, the cold call um, on the phone and then, um, or, you know, driving and then um, uh, driving and knocking on the door. Yeah. And I had a lot of success with doing the knocking on the door, going, you know, going in the back and, and you know, like, oh, who, who do I need to talk to? Because all of a sudden I'm talking to someone, I could see their face. Yeah. And, um, and obviously, every you know everything's different if you're having a face-to-face uh, interaction. Right, you get a facial expression. They're reacting. Right, right. And and I, it, it, so it's like you know you you um, so it's like okay yeah but then as you kind of keep going up in your sales career, there's a lot of these people that are in higher roles and uh, you have not even just gatekeepers. You've got people that don't work for the company that aren't going to tell you who you can speak to and. Yeah. You got to get creative with LinkedIn. You've got to get creative with your, your uh, network. Um, and, and, and you got to, I think effectively you have to be good with the phone because I mean, some of these, you know, some of these emails, it's like, if it's not specific, I mean, I, I delete them. I mean, and if it's not about what's going to fix if I have a problem or if I haven't right. thought of a problem. It's, it's just a commercial. Yeah, it, it's exactly. And sometimes it. it's not even a clear commercial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Especially when you can't get your name, like a name um, called Matt gets put as John, but it's directed to you. You start going and wondering like, oh, come on. You right. got to get the name right. You yeah. got to get the name right. Uh, yeah. What do you think you believe about sales that most salespeople don't believe? Uh, I really truly think, I, I, I think within sales, because there is this connotation and maybe there always will be since the the day of the modern the the day the the car was born and you you get this thing with car salesmen right there's a connotation that we're only trying to just do what's what's best for us and i really think it's 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 about solving problems and driving value yeah i think if you have that mindset because it's there's one thing of like being absolutely in love with your product that's great that you love your product you're you're all about it your customer doesn't care no okay. one, no one cares. Uh, <laughs> the thing that I've always learned, and I, I got this from a mentor, was that people, a, you know, it's it's good that if they, you have some kind of likability, but you'll get a lot more likability when you help them solve a problem yes. that they even haven't thought about, right. um, a solution that's that's tailored around them, and it's it's essentially it's it's the story of of how you connect all those dots, and that's the part I've enjoyed because you know. Even within, like you know, kind of go back to baseball. It's not about just going up there throwing pitching. You've got a bunch of players, and it's about utilizing the resources. And that's been probably one of the biggest part of my success is taking the people, whether it's within engineering, uh, logistics, is taking those people um, to build uh, those relationships along with these new customers. And customers recognize that they go, they "Oh, these people." And I, I and I've heard you talk about how like you know, you were. It, um, the engineering part. And so when you would come in, it would be this whole different conversation. And I, I mean, like taking my engineer, I'm from a previous company, he would come in and all of a sudden working with uh, guys on different projects. He pretty much did the sale. Like they're like, Oh, we we remember you. Yeah. 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 We'll do the exact same thing. And I'm like, okay, that, that was, Uh, that's, that was easy, but that was the value. That was the value. uh, Yeah. That's it. My whole career. It, I, and I never found another company that supported it. The, the first job I had, um, we had like a couple of handful of million dollar deals. And my sales rep would say like, well, don't go there on site unless they pay us. Yeah. I go, well, they're not going to pay us unless they right, use our right. equipment. <laughs> right, they're not right. going to use our equipment unless it works within their environment. He goes, okay, right. do whatever you want. Just don't tell me about it. So I spent my whole right. summer every day going to this client free of charge 
unless I was busy with something else yeah. and, and working to integrate our product with their environment. Yeah. And, oh, a year later, we get a $30 million deal from them. I wonder how that happened. Oh, yeah. You think that would have happened otherwise? <laughs> yeah. Right? And, and it, it was just this hub of activity. I got it to work. Then I get yeah. all their engineers using it. They get all yeah. excited. They make their deadlines. Yeah. And I, I, every company since then, I have to do it stealth. I can't tell yeah. anybody that I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Is he like, oh, you got to charge for that? I go, yeah, we could try, but it's like uh, when you talk to a lot of like advertising people, if you don't sh demonstrate value, you're oh. no different than the, the next person. And they, they give the business to the best pitch, not the most yeah. skilled. Yeah. Right. They want the skill. They're not, they don't care. The pitch is nice, but yeah. You know, and they think uh, the, the, the ideas in the pitch are what matters. No, it's the implementation. No, it, absolutely. Right? It's that, that long process of really finding out what does work. I, I think, you know, talking about how you're, you're given this scenario where you're giving, you're not just taking, you know, like right. having this Right, because like, that's what builds trust. Yeah. That, that when exactly. people ask what's value, value is giving yeah. something that yeah. they value. Yes. It's not what you value. It's not your presentation. Right. It's not your demo. Right. <laughs> right. It's not. It really isn't. And I, I think when, if, if, if you have that mindset of, of wanting to deliver value, I, I think there's certain customers that get, they'll get taken, um, kind of taken by surprise where, you know, they, they might go, um, okay, well, yeah, like here's the agenda. You know, we, you do the, the formalities and they're like, okay, well, Matt, um, you know, tell us, tell us about the company. Well, we're, we're this, it's literally one sentence. And then, and then they go, well, what I really want to do is ask you some questions to make sure I understand, you know, to get what you a want better. To do. Yeah. What you want to do, what's your unique situation. Sure. Yeah. So they start, you know, they start kind of opening up and then they finally go, so, so wait, hold on. What, what is it that you're doing? And I'm like, well, we can get to that a little bit later. Tell me a little bit more about like, you, you yeah. mentioned this and they start kind of getting like, I, there's like a confused kind of look, like what is going on here? I thought we were going to get this presentation this, this right uh, because what do they uh, think and they're thinking who are you what yeah. do you do and then, then right. they have to map that to what they need you're right. bringing out what they need yeah. yes so cool. yeah hey this has been a great conversation where can people go to follow you so uh i am on on linkedin uh, i think it's uh matt i think it's matt dash swan dash mba Yep. Or it's, it's something in that format. Um, I'm sure if you find me at Matt's one, yeah, Matt Dash. Global. Yep. Thanks for coming prepared on my, my LinkedIn profile. <laughs>